Hi and welcome everybody, it's Ruth here. It's always great to have your company on one of my videos. Thank you for joining me. So today is Monday. We're going to attempt a masculine card again today. And I really enjoyed making that kind of landscape card last week with the, what was it, the trees from, it was kind of a mixture really, it was some trees from this one here, Winterwoods, and from plaid tidings and then on friday if you missed that card i went ahead and made a stamp and blend a blended kind of background and used this tree to make a birthday card for my daughter which she loved she really did like it she was very happy with it and so that those two combined with something i saw kylie batucci do i think this last week has kind of set my mind going really and today i walked through some woods and it was just coming dusk and I was looking up at the trees and saw the silhouette of the trees against a brighter sky and I thought you know what I really want to just have another play with that kind of look and see what we can do. The other thing I'm going to do is also do a tiny bit of masking because it's so simple to do all you need is some kind of sticky paper that's just removable you know like a post-it note type thing and um it's super duper easy to just cut yourself a circle or whatever shape you need to cut and make a little mask. So I'm going to cut a circle because I want to create like a moon. And let's see what size moon. I think one and a half is probably a bit too big. So I think I might go for a one inch size moon. She says she can find all her punches. Must be somewhere on my desk. But I can't find it. Okay, so a really easy way to do that is you get to find the sticky point of your post-it note or your sticky notes and you cut it out. Now I sometimes find that the cheaper sticky notes you need to cut through a few at a time because otherwise it gets stuck in your punch. Okay, so I always cut two or three in one go. And also it means that you have a few ready. You know, it's easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy as they say. So I've already picked out some colours. We have Pacific Point, Gorgeous Grape, Smoky Slate, Highland Heather, Knight of Navy and Basic Grey. So we're going for those kind of lovely greys and blues. And we'll see, we might add some extra colours later. We'll just get started, see what happens and, you know, yeah, see how it all goes. Right, I'm going to say a quick hello to everybody on the live because it's always great to have your company. Hopefully the notification thing is working. If you'd like notified of when I go live, you do need to hit that bell button. So you do need to subscribe, hit the bell button. And also maybe if you um, need to have extra notifications, you can follow me on Artful Stampin' on Facebook. So I've got a page and a group for people who want to share their work too. Right, let's get started. So I've already pre-cut some pieces of cardstock and I'm going to say hello to a few people. Hi Bev, Jackie, Cindy, Sheila, Christine, Phoebe, Deborah, Deborah and Deborah together. That's so funny. Edith, greetings fellow card makers. Love these tutorials. Hi Edith, you're very welcome. You're out of bed early, okay. Deborah Davidson, good, good. Reet, didn't see the chat, now I do. Oh, good, good Reet. Donnie, Ellie, Glenna, Paper Skies with K. That's a lovely name. Christine, Cindy, Navarana, Glenna, Anne Marie, Tilly, Christine, Linda, Janine. Hi, everybody. So, for those of you who don't live in the UK um, I don't know if this is a diff slightly different time for you guys because it's it's 10 to 10 in the UK but our clocks went back over the weekend so we are now back in Greenwich Mean Time rather than BST so you know the great time change has happened for the season so I think I might just try. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that first. I'm going to put some grey down first. Just want to do a little bit of grey. So, just want a little bit of a, you know, 
you know, an interesting moon. Now, where's my sticky note? No, did I want sticky note or do I want scrap piece of paper? Oh, the bins went today. So I hardly have any scrap paper in my basket. Just got one. So I'm just going to... You know why I need to have scrap paper? Because my fingers may be oily and I need to protect my card from my oily fingers. Okay, it's very easy to accidentally get some oils on there. Okay. Alright. You're not too late, Deborah, it's fine. Okay, so let's stick some of these moons. These are going to be my moon. Oh, now who's watched that film, Willow? I recently watched it again. My sisters and I used to love that film. And there's this funny bit in it where the, one of the main characters, he gets hit by a love, love dust, fairy love dust. And he falls in love with this other character who's supposed to be his enemy. And um, Saoirse, that's it, Saoirse. He goes into her tent while she's sleeping and then he looks at her and he falls in love with her. And he says, Saoirse, you are my sun, my moonlit night. Anyway, that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> Hi, Helen. We always change back the last full week of October. Yes. Yes, I got so confused because my parent. I was talking to my parents on Saturday night because um, they rang because of May's birthday. And they were like, so you're putting the clocks back tonight? We're putting the clocks back tonight. And I was like, no, it's next week. And they were like, no, it's this week. And I was like, seriously? So the other week when I looked up clocks changing, I must have looked at an American website because <laughs> I was so convinced. Mad Mod again. I know. It was so cool to watch it again. And it was funny because my daughter was like, no, I don't want to watch it. And I was like, well, I'm putting it on because you guys are, you know, playing your games and it's not like you're watching anyway, is it? So I put it on and eventually they got a bit sucked into it, to be honest. Yeah, it's such a great film. And I was like, look, look, it's, um, oh, what's his name? Warwick Davis before he did like... Before before his Harry Potter days. You know, before he got famous for Star Wars and Harry Potter. He looks so young. Okay, so that's my sky. You are my sky. <laughs> yes. You dwell in darkness and it went away. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I'm not the only one that likes that film. Uh, went away? Uh, when you are drunk, I show the way. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like adding this colour and seeing what happens. And who's that, Deborah Smith? Where are you, Deborah? Yes, I know. I I sort of saw that there were some articles about maybe it was the last time we were going to change. But in the UK, we do still have farmers who. I think do appreciate it in the spring, so I'm not not sure. You haven't seen it again? Oh yes, do watch it again. It's such good fun. All right, now I was going to do some. Oh, now I don't know whether to do some kind of like snow drifts. This is where I'm getting a bit stuck because I I forgot what I was going to be doing. we go let's just add a bit of let's add a snow drift in here oops yeah i i've watched it loads of times do your grandkids like it linda Well, I definitely watched it 30 times as a teenager. I'm 
Bath Morda was just such a brilliant baddie, wasn't she? Just, you know. Sorry, Pacific, oh, sorry, Pacific Point, Phoebe. Yeah, we don't have blueberry bushel anymore. A bit sad. There we go, right. Oh, this is moving. Oh well, there we go. All right, um, let's have a look. Let's check our moons. Okay, our moons are there. They're, they're still showing. Okay, so let's bring on some trees. And I'm thinking Knight of Navy. Should we try it with a bit of Knight of Navy? Now, the thing that I saw that Kylie Batucci do that I loved was she was inspired by, I think, a, a card or something that somebody sent her. And she combined trees. Mind blown. You know? Like, okay. I mean, I know I love combining stamps, but I'd not thought to combine trees. And she, she combined Life is Beautiful, which is a really nice, strong kind of image thick branches not too thick but thick branches with a much more feathery branch so if you've got something like snow front i'm going to just grab snow front because there is a really lovely kind of feathery tree in there too okay so look look at the combination of those two the other thing i thought was nature's beauty that has some really nice feathery elements oh my goodness this one so I'm going to see if we can make it look like there's you know I'm just going to go for nature's beauty because I just love that stamp so much and see if we can combine the two images to get a really lovely uh, what's the word a texture tree okay so let's do this people let's see if it works all right we'll do it with one and then if it doesn't work, we can just throw it in the bin. So remember when you're experimenting with stuff like this, just do it. Just do it. And, you know, if it ends up not working, well, it's only a few minutes out of your day that you've wasted, isn't it? But you've tried. Okay, so let's have this tree. Maybe I might be able to fit two trees on here. So we'll maybe go for one there. I made the grandkids watch it, so I think so. <laughs> You know what? Get them hooked when they're young. You see, I did that to the prince with the Princess Bride as well. Get them hooked. And also, it's about ed it's educating them about these actors. You see, we were watching The Incredibles today. We've watched a lot of films lately. Can I just say because we're in lockdown now, and it's the week it was the weekend, and it's half term for my children. So, um, you know, I'm not trying to excuse my TV watching behaviour, but. Um, Anyway, so <laughs> we were watching The Incredibles and the guy who plays, ah, uh, what's the name of the guy who says inconceivable on The Princess Bride? He is in The Incredibles. So, you know, I make sure I point these things out to my children because I want them to be educated about the different actors. <laughs> Oh, do you guys have storms? Oh, my goodness. Hi, Miss Vanessa. Okay, so we have got this lovely feathery stamp, but I'm deliberately not going to ink up the ground bit, okay? Because we want to try and make it look like there's these gorgeous kind of feathery elements coming from the tree. So let's get you a bit closer. Can you see that, guys? Woo! There we go. I'll try not to move my thing that I'm working on. Okay, so I'm just inking up that little bit there. And I'm going to clean that off. Okay, I'm just going to ink that up more of an angle so that I'll have them coming off the tree. Oh, no, that didn't work. Oh, poopsie doops. That definitely didn't work. 
it kind of worked, I know, and then I went and inked that bit up. So I'm going to start again. Okay, right, focus, Ruth, focus. Mm, maybe I'm just going to ink up one of the trees. Oh, no, I've gone and done it again. I've got the tree there. Okay, let's try that. Have that growing out of there. Oh, yeah, that worked. Okay, so let's try that again. So I'm going to have him down in this corner. So I missed that ground bit. And then I just got the the side of the tree. I mean, you don't have to obviously be as pedantic as I'm being about this. But I want it to look beautiful. Okay. Hi, Denise. We are in the middle of ice storm season, Oklahoma. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So interesting, all the different weathers everybody's experiencing on my channel. Oh, look at that. Now, I know that probably somewhere out there, there may be a stamp that just basically does all of this for you, but... It's so nice to actually almost invent your own trees because, and I've said this before, sometimes with a certain brand of product, because I'm always using Stampin' Up! products, I get to the point where I'm like, not bored of it, but I'm like, I want to see it a different way. And so that's why I love combining stamps because other, other people who love Stampin' Up! stuff is going to go, hold on, how does she do that? <laughs> So. Okay, I really love that. What do you? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't. I don't need to bring it up to you, do I? Because it's zoomed in. Okay, what do you think, guys? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? No, I don't. I don't really want to do much else to that apart from maybe do a sentiment, a nice sentiment on the top there. Like thinking of you. It is a more realistic tree, yes. Hi Anne, doing what she say? I'm doing some scrappy cards while I'm watching Addicted After the Live on it. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, right, let's get a block. Okay, so the other thing I've been doing, I haven't just been sitting and watching TV for the last few days. I've actually been sorting out my mammoth bead collection. Because some, some of you guys don't know this about me, but before becoming a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I was also, well, before I was even a paper crafter, I used to do a lot of stuff with, and I used to make jewellery and do a lot of beading and stuff like that and make tiaras and things. And so over the years, I have just got oodles and oodles of beads. <laughs> and beads that I don't really need anymore. And things that I've worked on that have just sat there and collected dust. And So I've had a massive sort out. And then, of course, what happens with a massive sort out, you kind of go, oh, that's a pretty bead. And, oh, I think I'm going to make something with that. So I've actually, at the end of the video I'm going to show you three pairs of earrings that I've done over the last couple of days with some beads that I just couldn't resist okay so I'm getting my blue ink now and just vignetting the edges so vignette is when you do darker edges and the reason why this is so effective is because it then draws the eye in to the middle of the card so even though this bit is beautiful, we actually want to kind of draw the eye in. And then I think I may just go over some of this because I think this needs a little bit more blue in it. And I think I might just grab some Bermuda Bay. I'm going to pop my mask back over because it just feels like there's too many sort of whitish bits in that sky. It just needs a little bit more. I'm just going to pop 
a little bit more blue there. You love the colours. Oh, good. And then we've been having a massive clear out of um, a, to a room in our house that we traditionally have called, kind of called it the toy room because it ended up where we put all the children's toys. But it had like old DVDs and games and things like that. So we've been sorting that out. And we found an old DVD of Michael, a concert, a Michael Bublé concert. And one of my sons used to love watching this. It was like his bedtime routine to watch this video. So we've just been watching that just now as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, it brought back memories. So cool. Yes, I made Helen's tiara. I did. Yes. I think I made Esther's. I did make Esther's as well. Yeah, I made my... So the first tiara I kind of really made was my tiara. And then I kind of experimented and got better at it and made a few friends' tiaras. There we go. Right, that's one. Very happy with that. So let's bring on this one. And I think just before... Just put a little bit of blue onto that moon. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more of the turquoisey blue. Oh, it would look great with a fairy. You know what? I think just because you said it, I might pull out my fairy in a second and use it. Because I tidied up the other day and I found her. Oh, oh, oh there she is. Falling out of the drawer. Oh, okay. So let's have a think. If we put the fairy here... Right, so if we put the fairy there, we still need some trees. Hi, Dana from Michigan. How you doing? Welcome. I saw your sweet comment earlier from another video. Is this the first time you've caught us on the live? So anyone who's here for the first time, please do say hello. We love to welcome everybody to the chat. Thanks Jane. Good morning Sharon from Australia. Hi Kathy. So if you've been inspired by something you see on my channel please do go and join Artful Stampin' Space over on Facebook. You guys have been wowing me with your beautiful landscapes. You've like taken the idea and absolutely run with it and kind of basically improved what I did <laughs> you've added houses you've added deer <laughs> they're gorgeous and some of you lot aren't like to having auntie Mabel to the party and some of you didn't and that's absolutely fine it's just great to see you guys creating so thank you so much everybody who's had a go at that one because it was really fun Okay, so this time I think I might play with these trees, just because I can. Let's do something a bit different. Right, I'm going to put you somewhere safe. Hi, Linda. Hello from a cold, rainy Maine. Oh, you need a fet to make a fairy card for a December birthday. Well, this would be perfect for a December birthday, don't you think? Okay, so again, I'm being very careful not to ink up uh, too much of the trunks of this tree. And I definitely don't want the ground bit inking up. Okay. And I'm really mainly getting two impressions out of this. I mean, I'm sometimes getting a third, but to make the very delicately uh, branches show up, you do need to just, you know, ink regularly. I'm watching Deborah and taking 
Thanks. Hi, Linda Carey. First time watching live. Oh, you're so welcome here. Everyone, please say hello to Linda. So, have you been following my channel for a while? We love to get to know everybody, wherever they're from. I've been seeing... Oh, you missed that one, Trish. Uh, it was... When did we do it? Thursday, I think, because I wanted to try and do a few more Christmassy type ones. But that, I mean, that, with this even, there's no reason why you couldn't make this kind of Christmassy if you wanted to. Right, where's my block? Excuse my arm. Right, so just a disclaimer, this is not a Stampin' Up! stamp. This is by another company who I just love. I, you know, I don't get paid for endorsing her. Um, it's just another company stamp. Uh, she's and what's lovely, she's a British design. She's a British designer, British company, and um, she just does the most beautiful stamps. Mainly, sort of fairy woodlandy type things. Um, I've actually bought some as a gift for somebody, um, and I need to post it actually. Okay, so, oh, I feel like she just needs inking a bit more. I just want lots and lots and lots of ink on there. This would be a good time to use my Stamparatus, actually. Now, I'm going to be careful not to put too much pressure where I've got, I've got too much ink on there. But I just want to put pressure and give it time for the ink to go down. The Speckle Stamp from Label Me Bold makes a great ground and path stamp ah oh yes 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 i remember yeah i don't have that stamp anymore but there is one this is this one as well in snow front which is quite handy who's just got the poncetta oh lovely yeah it's a really nice stamp set actually i i kind of dismissed it early on and then started to see what everyone else was doing I was like oh, okay maybe I will like it oh look isn't she beautiful oh she is lovely isn't she right I just feel like we need to vignette her a little bit so you can do this oh I might just bring in a, a texture stamp actually I might bring in some little sparkles we've got got some other textures here. Just might bring in a bit of Pacific Point with some blobs and then we've got some sparkles. Oh hi mummy! I didn't see my mum come in. Where's she gone? Did my mum come in? Oh hi mummy! <laughs> it's my mummy. Okay, so here we go, just with a few little sort of textures. Ooh. Just going to bring a few down around the edge. Not too many because I'm going to ink that edge up a little bit more with the dark, the night of navy. Thank you, Nessa. Yeah, it's a new colour I got today. Uh, the bubbles are from Life is Beautiful. So the same set that has that gorgeous tree, this one, we've got the bubbles there. And then it's the same for these little twinkles. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Taking a break from the ongoing saga of scraps. <laughs> Deborah says, I love it when I have the same stamps as Ruth's using. <laughs> Good, me too. <laughs> oh, 
There we go. I think that will do. <gasps> wing Costella on the wings. What a great idea. Either that or the, gl the glue pen. I need to show you guys. You know the other day on the trees, the, it, I was going to show you how they dried. So I'm going to show you that now. <laughs> oh, I've got that stamp set, but didn't notice the bubbles. Deborah. <laughs> uh, okay, so just, just a quick recap on last week's. So that was with the glitter... Uh, what's it called? <sighs> Shimmery crystal effects. So that's how that turned out. It's kind of, it dries clear. Not so much of the shiver, I would say. Then this was with the wing Costella with splatters and a little bit, you know, painted onto the trees, but with splatters. And this was the one with the texture paint, which is a kind of faux snow, really, which is kind of cute. So let's put some of this. And this will just kind of like make her wings look a little bit 3D as well. So what you can do is just literally fill the area that you want. And this is quite good for creating like dew drops on flowers as well. It can be quite nice. I might use my stamping platform. So yes, me, I was just, I thought of it afterwards, Navarana. Yeah, definitely. If you want a really crisp image, you use your stamping platform because then you can go in and stamp again. So I might do that on the next next ones because it's I can just grab it and use it. There we go. I think a little a few little dots coming from her hair. Maybe some by her feet, because of course, you know, fairies have got to have a little bit of sparkle. From where they fly. Can you see that? My December birthday card is being created right in front of me. Got to have fairy dust, absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to another one then. And if anyone wants to suggest a slightly different colour palette, I'm happy to go with a different colour palette. I've already started with my greyish moon though, so that won't be changing. Hi Reet. Hi oh hi Nydia. Hi, Jenny. Oh, no, I've already said hello to her. The problem is, when people come in, I see everyone going, hello, 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 and then I end up just automatically just going, oh, hello, so-and-so, and I'm like, oh, no, I said hello to them earlier. <laughs> Golden and red. Okay, we can do that. Golden and red. I'm going to put my blue and purple brushes away because, knowing me, I will probably pick one up by accident and... What about a bit of pink as well, Navarana? Is that allowed? Will you let me do that? Go for these. Right, now I'm going to tear myself another little landscape and this time I think I'll have the landscape starting a little further up <laughs> some soft pink and moonlight madness do you mean mi misty moonlight I don't think there is such a colour as Moonlight Madness. We should need to tell Stampin' Up we want one. 
<laughs> We're all mad in here. Alice in Wonderland. We quote literature as well as movies in here, everybody. You're right. <laughs> we, we quote all sorts of things. We quote the Bible, Shakespeare, Alice in Wonderland. Mad Mardigan. <laughs> Hi, Maya. Heartful madness. The only thing is with these colours, do you think these are going to be masculine? Oh, gosh, it's supposed to be masculine Monday and I've done that fairy. Oh, well. Never mind. <laughs> We went off on a bit of a tangent, didn't we? Oh yes, musicals. Hi Wendy. She got, oh, she got distracted with her cricket. We were in darkness and it went away. Oh, what are my other favourite? Oh, my other favourite quote from that film is On no account does anyone fall in love with that baby. <laughs> oh, and then when he's saying goodbye to Kaya and she goes, um, I miss you already. <laughs> Now, I feel like we need to have some sort of drifts coming over the moon as well, because it looks a bit too pale there, doesn't it? It could be a male fairy. Mm, no. She's definitely got female appendages. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yep, yeah, happy little accidents. <laughs> Just trying to put a bit of orange onto these snowy mountains. There we go. Right. Peter Pan. <laughs> Yes, it could be Mars, couldn't it? Yes, you're quite right. Okay, so instead of this time, Knight of Navy. Oh, what about a bit of oh, Blackberry Bliss? Shall we go down that route? Yeah, two of my youngest children were happy accidents. <laughs> oh, basic grey says Trish. Oh, Trish. I don't know now. I don't know. I'm not sure basic grey is... Funny enough, I don't think it's dark enough. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but I'm just going to do a little tester. Oh, it could be. All right, I'll do base. I'll do Blackberry Bliss on the next one. I'm rolling my sleeves up. I'm serious now. I think most kids are. <laughs> oh, well, they might be accidents to us, but they're not accidents to God. I love that verse in the Bible. It says um, that God opens, opens the wombs of women. No child is an accident. I 
<laughs> we get the next one. Yes, because I've got four bits of paper. Look, that's the last one. All right. <laughs> palm trees. Ah, yeah. I don't have any palm trees. I don't have that palm tree stamp. Right, now, what should we use to fill? Ah, now, I haven't used this one from Snowfront. I did talk about using this one, but I didn't earlier, did I? So... Let's see what this looks like now. That's it, exactly, Deborah. Precious, precious. <laughs> Maya, <laughs> are you are you quoting Maya from? Um... So that is a quotation, everybody, okay? <laughs> From one of my favourite films. Um, <laughs> Hunt for the world of people. Cork Asian? Well, they got that wrong. <laughs> Just thinking about that film makes me laugh. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, dear me. Actually, a friend of mine on Facebook um, said that her and her son watched it recently and they were really happy that they got introduced to it and I was just like, put a smile on my face. I was like, yay, another person who's been introduced to that film. Right. Lacking something, need something. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Needs some sort of texture, doesn't it? In the round the back. Um. You know what, let's just do a bit of grey around the edge. Let's just start by doing that. I was thinking stencil, actually, Navarana. Yeah, I, I was thinking that. Let's see if I can find one. laying my hand on this one because it's <laughs> I use it so often it's out most of the time Hi Julie. I think just putting a sentiment on top of there would be fine. Um, let's 
let's have a think. No, sympathy is not quite the right one for that, is it? That one's quite a cool one, isn't it? A couple of deer on the hill in the background. Yes, we could hide a few couple of deer in the background, couldn't we? Yeah. Yes, I was thinking that. Yeah, this bit. Let's see what happens when we do this. I almost feel like I could cut it there and I'd I'd be happier with it. It feels like it doesn't need that that bit there. We'll come back to it. Okay, so <clears throat> now with this one. I'm feeling the desire to do a little bit of what I did last time with have where you have the trees in the background, sorry, behind the hills. Do a couple of those. So let's get some colour down first. We'll go we'll go again with the oranges. Might just bring in some yellow as well just to lighten it all up a bit. Um I can go to at the moment is bumblebee. Because it's such a warm yellow. Whose anniversary is it? Wow, Deborah, you're on a bit of a skive, is that what you're saying? Wow, that's amazing. Definitely something to celebrate. Yeah, I smudged earlier with the blue. I don't know how I got that on there. Right, I'm going in with a bit of Melon Mambo because I know that by mixing that with the orange, it's not really going to look as pinky as it normally does. Okay, so just to remind a reminder, I've got a few people lined up for doing a November class with me and we're going to focus on doing a wreath. So I will, I've been a little bit occupied and I haven't checked my diary to find out what other days I can offer. But if anyone is interested in doing a wreath workshop, can you let me know? Right, so let's get some of these trees. Have a, have the sledging octopus. Oh, he bought you a new ring. Oh wow. That's 
lovely. A pearl one? Pearl necklace? Yeah, I do have some masking paper somewhere. But I think I, I quite like just tearing the paper because it means that, I don't know, it's quite easy to then get a different look each time. Oh, I went a bit over with my... Just, I didn't mean to have the tree floating so much there. I'm just going to do that so it doesn't look like he's floating. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to... Maybe have a bit of a pinkish tinge to the snow. Sorry, uh, Sheila was talking about the moon. Uh, let me just check, check your... Oh, I do. Sorry, yes, I do. Yeah, you're right, Sheila. I could have done that for the moon. Oh, come on. Okay, now I do want to get in that bigger tree just on the side there. Might just do another another snow drift. Okay. Oh, could do with a little tree there. Now there are more trees in this set. Look, there are these little ickle ones. So it's quite nice to have that variation, especially if you're doing a lot of landscape style stamping. It's nice to have the variety. So this one again is a quite a tall tree, whereas that one's a little fatter tree. Okay, right, let's get, disguise that bit of whatever. It's ink from the octopus. He got scared on the way down the hill, did he? <laughs> it's an ant caught in a snowdrift. I think it just needs a little bit of sponging because it looks really stark white in the front so it just needs a little bit extra here just to calm the whiteness of that snow down. Maybe that was the problem on this one. It just needs a bit of something here. See this is why it's worth keeping going because then you can figure out things as you go along. Okay I think I'm quite happy with that could do some little birds maybe oh we could do the deer deer couldn't we thank you mummy look it's my mum and dad the deer deers 
<laughs> we have a bit of a running joke about the deers, don't we? Dear, dear. Third generation looks like a shadow. Ah. Oh, thank you, Vanessa, you sweetheart. Could have a little birds as well, but no, oh, I think I'll leave it. Right, so. Ooh, could shall we make this one our Christmas card? Right, well, this definitely could be a masculine card, couldn't it? A, win a wintry birthday. I'm trying to think if I know of anybody whose birthday's in the winter. Hmm. Thank you, Linda. I take that as a very high compliment coming from you. Because um, Linda Yamakodo is a very experienced landscape and... Um, what's the word you use? Uh, oh, what's it called? The type of stamps you like. She's a very experienced stamper of like composite landscape compositions and things. So, yeah, this one's still not quite. Do oh gosh, I've gone on. <laughs> I laid it against the fairies. I've got a bit of glue on there. Um. This one, I still think, just needs a little trim there, doesn't it? Is it Tom's birthday? Oh, yes, it is, in, November, in uh, December. Yeah, but you know what he's like. He'll want... My husband... <laughs> Thanks, Helen. Yes, my husband. Because <laughs> I've forgotten, forgotten who he was. Ah... <laughs> uh got glue on the back of this I'm just going to pop that on there I think this needs a trim Get that there. Oops. that's better I prefer that now I think I'll just trim a bit off the top and the bottom no, sorry the sides now Scenic stamping. Thank you. Oh, make a nice card for Briar next year. Hello, Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky's got a very special birthday coming up next year, haven't you, Miss Vicky? Oh, yes. Our friend Bola. She is her birthday's Boxing Day. There we go. Right, now this one, I think it just needs some grey around the edges then I'll be happy with this <clears throat> Julie says that looks so beautiful I want to go there and see the beauty well I'm sure our Canadian friends could help share some scenery with us Who else has got snow at the moment? Any Scandinavian countries got snow at the moment? Right, I'm going to stop there, guys. I think uh, we've fulfilled our scenic stamping needs today. I'm just going to clean these up before the Blackberry Bliss really sets in. Move these over to one side and then I can clear my desk. Nope, says Navarana. Lots of wind and rain. Oh. How, I wonder how much further north you are than I am, Navarana. What's the name of your nearest big town? I'm going to Google it now and see how far north you are than me. Bye, Mum. Take care, Deborah. Sleep well. No snow here yet in the eastern townships of Quebec. Ah. Uh. 
Right, so the first one was this one. Let's just move those over slightly. This is our first experiment with stamping two different types of tree. Okay, so that was the focus really on, on doing that. And also combining some masking with ink blending. Now this one, I think I would go back in there and just do some deeper blending. I love it when the colour really starts to saturate the card stock. And then you, you kind of almost lose the whiteness of the card. I, I, I like that. Um, so anyway, that I, I love the combination of that, that thicker tree with nature's beauty. This one here. So let's just go over that again. So that tree was life is beautiful. And then we combined it with that one from nature's beauty. So then this one was, again, the tree from Life is Beautiful, but we used a different tree. We used that one from Nature's Beauty. A non-stampin' up stamp, the fairy one. And then came back in with these bubbles and then the sparkles from Nature's Beauty. That one. There we go. Oh, dense. Oh, right, I'm going to look it up now. Uh, and then that one. So with this one, now it's funny, isn't it? The first time I thought of doing this technique, I thought of this branch. But actually, I don't like it so much as these ones. Because the contrast is not as strong between the thicker tree and the that one. But... I'm not saying I don't like it completely. I just prefer that one. I prefer the featheriness of those. And then this one was just going for that landscape look again and doing some masking for some snow drifts and a moon, nice moon. So there we go. That's just fun to do. Could maybe do with bringing some purple in just around the edges. Might just do that now, actually. Um, so I didn't end up using winter woods, did I? Which I thought I might have done, but you can experiment with that. Chop it. Chop which one? I did. Oh, I did chop that one already. Deborah, are you a bit behind on the chat? going to add a little bit of this purple to the edge. You love them all but especially the fairy one. Oh, Thank you Cheryl. Actually I'm just going to move it because it's still got sticky glue on it. Right so before everyone goes I am going to show you the earrings that I made. I don't often wear earrings. I did for the first time in a long while on Sunday and I was quite pleased because sometimes my ears can get a little bit aggravated or the holes in my ears can get a bit aggravated. Anyway, Sunday they seemed absolutely fine. But then, <laughs> Monday, I was making earrings and chopping and changing, taking them in and out of my ears and it seems to have aggravated them again. So I'm just going to give my ears another a rest, I think, tomorrow. I won't need to wear earrings tomorrow. But I actually quite like wearing them. There we go, that's a bit better. It's just got a bit of a vignette effect around the edge now. Okay, right. There we go. You like them all, but the last one is your favourite, this one. Oh. Well, you know what? That sometimes does happen, you know, when you're experimenting with something because each time you do something, you get better and better. My sister and I were talking about this, you know, about art and craft and stuff like that and just saying, actually, there's nothing that can, nothing can be experienced. Just have a go. But keep having a go and having a go at the same thing. That's how you improve. So, um, so I got one, two, three, and four. There we go. Yes, I must say I think the composition on that one is particularly nice. But I do like the fairy. So, 
There we go. Right, so a uh, pair of earrings. So <laughs> this, this, these earrings nearly ended up even bigger than this, but I put them on my ears and thought, oh my goodness, they're so heavy. So um, this, these beads were from a, a bracelet I purchased. I just really love the beads of them. And the el elastic on the bracelet went a bit funny. It went, it went a bit too um, stretchy. So I've kept the beads. And it's quite nice because I think they're wooden. So they're not too heavy. But they've got this really lovely kind of like paint effect on them. So I matched them up with these lovely fl flower beads on here. And just loads of head pins and gold beads. And I've just got them clustered then on top of those, like that. So that's that pair. Oh, thank you, Glenna. <laughs> oh. So that's that pair. And then today I was having a... So I've sorted all my beads out into different categories. I've got, you know, wooden and then plastic and whatever. And I was going, I was trying to go through each category going, okay, I don't need to keep everything. So I was getting rid of some beads that I, I didn't know I didn't need. So then I found these in my wood box and I quite like these because this one's kind of quite geometric. Then this has got gold, gold paint on it. And then this has just got a really cool, I don't know what it is, some sort of patterning on it. I don't think it's painted. I think that's from the wood. Uh, but teaming them up with some gold bead caps and some I've got a brass bead cap there just makes it look really expensive makes it look very um trendy and expensive so if you ever if anyone's ever into making jewelry bead caps are the way guys when I was younger making jewelry I used to think what's the point of a bead cap it's just an expensive thing to put on something but now I realize it makes your bead look expensive <laughs> okay and then this is a final pair I made tonight just, I, I just love looking at all the different gorgeous colours and matching different colours, but then all the different textures. So this one is, this is a, what's called a foil lined bead. So in real life, it's got like a silvery kind of core to it. And it's just got this really beautiful blue. And then this is just a really, a flat, I think this is a Czech pressed glass bead. I'm not sure where that came from. And then that's a Swarovski crystal. I just got rid of all my bead making stuff. Oh. Uh, this is Blackberry Bliss. Linda. Oh, sorry, you're talking about the beads. Well, I I can't, I just can't bear to get rid of all my beads. I just, I just love, I, I love them. <laughs> So I'm not going to get, I have got rid of some things. I've got a whole box of stuff to go leave the house. But um, it, it just reminded me how much I do actually love tinkering. And so I, when, in the future, when I have a little bit more time, I am thinking of, of well, I have already started a channel. I've just not put any videos on there yet of a channel called Artful Crafting. I, I think I'm going to do a channel, but put, but put stuff on there rather than have it on Artful Stamping. So, um, watch this space, guys. I'll, I'll probably start doing a few little tutorials. So, Oh, Deborah is behind me because I had a bathroom break and paused you. <laughs> oh, bless you. She's catching up now. <laughs> you love the purple ones. Well, the colour is... It's a, a very sort of... It's like metallic-y. So, it's like a bright pink. It's like the magenta madness but with a hint of the purple, but it's over a black base. So it's kind of quite streaky, but I, I quite like it. It's like it's not been fully painted and then it's been glazed over the top. So um, they're all quite big. I quite like big earrings. So there we go. Good night, Caroline. Um, I do sell earrings. Yeah, I do. Um, I just I just don't advertise it very, very often. I sell at a local shop. Uh, and if if anyone you know wants anything making, I'm I'm thinking of offering my services because I've got plenty of beads to make things. So um, there we go. Oh, you're talking about the beads? Yeah. Oh, right. They um yeah M more magenta madness I would say, and we don't really have this colour at all. It it is it's a it's 
on the pinky side of purple, if you want to call it a purple. It's more of a dusky pink. It's sort of like a magenta madness, but with uh, grey tones, that one. And then the, this bright magenta-y colour is, yeah, it is bright. So there we go. Right, Glenna says the purple ones are my favourite. Hi, Dava. Are you new to my channel? Great to have you here. Sorry, I didn't say hello to you earlier. Anyway, lovely to see you. I have to go too now, Julie. So all the best to you all. Uh, what's tomorrow? Tuesday tomorrow. I am thinking I should start doing a few more Christmassy products. Uh, sorry, products. Christmassy stamps, uh, stampings. So I'll have a think. If anyone's got any ideas, things they'd like me to do, then let me know. I might try clean and simple tomorrow, actually, because I'm just looking at Snowfront and there's that darling little snowman. I'm wondering if we could do, like, a row of snowmen. Just just do some really clean and simple cards. Maybe even just with this stamp set, Snowfront. I'll have a think. I like to mix it up a bit, you know. So, there we go. Very artsy, yes. <laughs> they are, aren't they? Uh, right lots of love to you all thank you so much for joining me and thank you for the super chat Vanessa you are a darling so do remember if you'd like to support my channel if you can't purchase the products from me then you can support me by super chatting or by paypal uh, gifting so the links should be should be in the description below but I will check oh it's not there YouTube has messed up on me again right I'll add I will add the description straight after this video. But there are links to my shop, to my Facebook group, Facebook page, and PayPal as well. Lots of love to you all. Take care for now, guys. Bye.